This is Dr. Brendan Cronin from the Queensland Eye Institute demonstrating a modified sepsa knot for pupil repair in a case of a patient who had traumatic pupil damage during cataract surgery at another institute using a tenoproline suture. I'm using micro graspers in this case. The handshake technique could also be used with a 25 gauge needle for removing the sharp end of the needle through the distal wound there. This is the first pass of the needle. It's very important to try and achieve a nice round pupil with this first pass. The eye full of viscoelastic. In this case, I've used Helon 5 to make a nice formed anterior chamber and to keep the anterior chamber nice and stable whilst I perform the suture. It's important to be very careful with the cornea in cases like this. It's this next step that people can sometimes find difficult or intimidating in performing an iris repair. Really the steps are very simple and if you think about it logically it's very easy to perform. You do need the right equipment. Micro tyres from MST are very handy. A Kuglin hook and also some nice tying forceps. Once you start with your initial suture that's passed through the iris you then insert the Kuglin hook into the anterior chamber and to take a loop of the suture that is proximal to where the suture passes through the iris defect and pull it out of the distal wound. It's important that the loop that you create is large enough that can easily be worked with. You can always make it smaller by pulling on the proximal end of the suture. You'll see in a moment here, we now have this configuration which admittedly is very difficult to see because the suture is so fine of part one being the proximal end of the suture. Part two being a part of the proximal end of the suture that has been pulled through the distal wound and part three being the distal part of the suture that has already passed through the iris defect that is to be repaired. Now we start the first part of the 311 suture. It's really important not to overcomplicate this in your mind. Start by putting your tying forceps inside the loop that is labelled number two. Then do three loops around your tying forceps and carefully go and grab part three of the suture with your tying forceps. Then simply pull as you would with any other surgical knot your loops over part three of the suture. Obviously you're not going to be pulling the knot tight like you would in a cornea. From this step here, you then hold part three of the suture and go back to part one of the suture and slowly but gently pull the suture back through the proximal wound in the cornea. Once the knot has tied nice and tightly and is firm on the iris, you've performed the first and most important part of the 311 knot. Now that same procedure is repeated two more times but instead of three loops around part two of the suture, one loop is performed and then pulled through the proximal part of the wound. Now you'll see I'm using micro scissors to cut the suture, cut the suture very close to the knot so that there aren't loose ends inside the anterior chamber that could chafe or cause irritation to the corneal endothelium. And I'll perform irrigation, aspiration. These are well-constructed wounds so don't leak and don't require a suture. I use intracameral antibiotics. The patient had an excellent cosmetic result, a big improvement in their visual symptoms.